name is Rebecca Martin and I'm the organizer of the Chicago Film Lover Exchange. Today we're going to be talking about Keo Reed's The Third Man, which stars Orson Welles, Joseph Cotton, and Alita Vali. So we are going to be talking about this film in three parts. And for part one, we're going to be discussing the film through the eyes of Holly Martins. That scene that we just saw was where he just finds out that his best friend has been killed. And that's when the film kind of takes a different pace, a different tone, everything's turned upside down, which means I want to talk about the characteristics of the film noir genre. So let's get started. Al. Uh, yeah, it's that, that there's a really great scene in that like it shows this whole transition. What you see right before that is this kind of almost documentary footage, sort of almost like the travelogue that mm -hmm. Austria itself could put <laughs> if they were in a kind of a negative frame of mind. But they, but once he arrives, like it, the through the camera work and the and the use on the lighting, things start to get looking a little start to get looking a little different. Mm -hmm. He has this really interesting look up straight upwards. It appears at this porter. And the porter has a chandelier, has a light fixture that almost looks like it could fall straight down on, on either Holly or us in the audience. Mm -hmm. and, and when Cotton even arrives, it has one of the best elements on Fillmore, one of, the one of the key moments, like his shadow. His shadow appears way before, way before Holly does, right mm -hmm. on the staircase. And once the, he finds out more about what happened to his friend, it gets the camera angles start to get more tilted. Right. And things get more and more dark. And you start to realize that now you've entered a little bit more of a nightmare than a documentary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Mary. Well, I, I think one of the um, features of the film noir genre is uh, misdirection or misleading. And uh, one of the key scenes where that happens <laughs> is when he is taking into a, a taxi cab and uh, there are, there's a lot of rapid cutting around street corners, uh, quick uh, close-up shots between the taxi driver's face and uh, Joseph Cotton's face. And I think there are bars uh, between the uh, front right. seat and the back seat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, he, you have this terribly trapped feeling and we're so become so worried that he, something bad's going to happen to him. And he ends up at this literary review that he agreed to do. And uh, it ends up being a bad meeting for him anyway. Right. So, <laughs> but um, we're all so relieved when he gets to his literary review. And, and, right. And um, uh, he comes through that uh, maybe a little humiliated but unharmed. Right. And um, just one thing I wanted to say, and then I'll pass along to you guys, but... Um, <coughs> I, I love the parts where you think it's something and then it's something else. Like, I, I don't know if you guys thought this, but with the bird part, when he's in that room all dark, running away from those guys chasing him at the literary party, um, it sounds like it's a baby's crying. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. At least that's what I heard. And so I think he's like, oh, shh, like quiet baby. And then it was that obnoxious bird. Which is so unreal, you know, and that seems like a film noir thing where it's just like you think something's something and then it's something mm -hmm. else, which is mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Yes, Holly is a really fascinating character on that in which, which I think if I was to just give a one sentence definition to what noir is like, like many movies are about a person, about a character or a hero who wants to have, who sees that there's a mystery. And he goes on a quest to go and solve the mystery. Mm -hmm. And noir, in a noir film, in a noir story, the tragedy is he actually finds out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he actually sees what happens. And Holly, as Holly Martin's is such an interesting character because his mystery is actually a level of discovery of what really happens in the war environment in right. Vienna. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it, his American idealism and his, na and his, uh, and his naive nature get... <laughs> taken for a real for a literal ride in in, uh, right. in, in from Mary's case right yeah. Nancy well back to that parrot um, having been bitten by a parrot enables him to say to a couple of times in the 
in the movie, I yeah, I got bit by a parrot, which I'm sure as a writer, <laughs> as a writer, too. yeah, he really liked to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think his uh, role as a writer is interesting. He was a Western writer, kind of a pulp fiction writer. And he comes in to the environment as an outsider, which is like a genre of films, especially Western films, some of the old Western mm -hmm. films like Shane and, and The Searcher and some more contemporary ones where a misfit or an outsider comes in and changes the environment. So he comes in, he doesn't know what's going on, he doesn't know Vienna, he doesn't know the corruption, but he changes the balance of power, the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the way things are going by his naivete and mm -hmm. his intent on looking for what happened to his uh, friend, who he thinks, of course, at the beginning was innocent, and he wants right. his death to be investigated. Mm -hmm. And then as we learn more and more, the insider gets deeper and deeper in. We learn more and more about okay. what's really going on, which is very interesting. Yeah, flow. something I, I want to talk about, and then I'll pass along to you, is um, Anna, like his interaction with Anna, and how mm -hmm. it is like he's <clears throat> fallen in love with her, like immediately. And he's kind of like... I don't know what it is maybe it's his westerns but and he's like a cowboy or something like he wants to keep the woman safe he wants to like be her protector but as we know in film noir the women are not like that they don't want protecting they want to do the you know action they want to take control they're flawed characters just mm -hmm. you know so it's just it's interesting so yeah, so I think uh, naivety and um, the false paths are the main points of this film that got me sucked in. I haven't seen too many film noir movies. I've only seen Chinatown, which I can kind of try to compare those two. Mm -hmm. But um, the film to me gets really interesting about halfway through the film where you actually <coughs> are introduced to Orson Welles' character. And um, he just takes over the screen in, in that regard and, and the whole film kind of turns on his head. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, the film's kind of more like a just... A mystery film, but it's kind of like from the viewpoint of the ignorant American, I would say. Right. Kind of fish out of water mm -hmm. um, in Austria. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you kind of oh, see okay. that he's down the wrong path in terms of his perception and his his viewpoint of the world and his worldview in terms of this right. geographic region is he does he knows nothing. And I think the it really plays into the the uh, the four pronged approach in terms of how it's being ruled at that time after World War Two, mm -hmm. how it's mm -hmm. being governed, and it's kind of you kind of mm -hmm. feel like he's he's just like an outsider and he's trying to learn um, just how the city is set up. In the beginning, like everyone was saying, like Anna and Calloway and like I forget his friends' names, but they all were like, "You don't want to get mixed up in this. Don't get mixed up. Like like yes. just." Yeah, so they're, like, pushing him kind of away. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, at that one turning point when he finds out about Harry, it's just, like, he's in it, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, Al, did you have something to say? Oh, you're, that's a noir, that's a noir staple. Right. You, you, I, there might be need to be a counter sometimes of how many times someone tells our hero he really shouldn't learn this, find out, figure out what's really going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a really interesting take on it because, because usually on a noir case, the hero is a, um, is a, a, a gumshoe, a detective, a police, a police person, or like a, or a criminal who at least thinks he knows, who at least thinks he knows the angle. Holly kind of thinks he has an idea of what right. he should do, but his his naive nature is just a little bit more. Like, like even when the first time you see one of his stories held by another character, it looks like almost like a little golden book of a cowboy, yeah. <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a cowboy. Oklahoma it's that kid. exact, the uh -huh. Oklahoma kid. It's even uh -huh. referenced as a kid, as a kid, uh -huh. as a kid type picture. But that's not a child. A kid in that sense. Well, so, well yeah. yes, no. In the I Western think sense, it is not. In the Western sense, it is not. But in the but in the in the noir sense, he's very very underdeveloped in terms of his awareness of of how to deal with things, even the most rudimentary way. Uh -huh. I don't even think he has an idea on money. <laughs> he's on like how to like go what and influence people. What did he call people. his money? It was like. Uh, stage money, Army Sta money. Yeah. military money, no. Army or, money. Yeah, but yeah. he kept like acting like it wasn't real. Like, exactly. Like, no, and it wasn't exactly it wasn't because it isn't. It was right. Oh, okay. No, it wasn't official currency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. he has this like right. He has this nature, just like 
I, um, I'm a good guy. I think my friend is a good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this girl is a great girl. I just want to help her. I just want to help her out. But there's not a whole lot of knowledge about, uh, knowledge he can bring to their, that except that I'm just enthusiastic. I'm just enthusiastic, and I'm a go getter, and I'll just keep plugging. I'll just keep plugging away. Right, and then um, Anna, she is definitely a film noir chick. I feel like in the sense like. Is she a femme fatale? That's the term. Yeah. That's no, I mean, I think I think so. I mean, she's not a murderer, but mm -hmm. she sees understanding in Harry. Right. Um, she knew what Harry was doing. Right. right? And she's just like, poor Harry. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, she's, just leave. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, um, she, uh, uh, she has such unconditional love for Harry, and that really mm -hmm. stunned me. Even after she learned the details of his business, mm -hmm. she still maintained this unconditional love for Harry. And then she says something that really surprised me uh, when Holly and uh, uh, Alita Valley, when Holly and Anna Schmidt are in her apartment, uh, she says something surprising. She says, um, Harry Lyme never grew up. The world grew up around yes, him. Yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great quote. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that reflects Holly more than Harry. Mm -hmm. and, and I was... So, but nevertheless, her Anna Schmidt saw this some sort of innocence uh, in Harry. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think around that scene, around that line, like Holly was reminiscing, and he says, "Oh, Harry was always planning scams and playing pranks and so on." And and Wells does deliver this level of a, of a prankster who always has this enthusiasm. Uh -huh. For, for things and literally just likes to literally play underground <laughs> in, right. the, in, in the sewer system, which is the most noirish kind of environment. It takes the, right. it takes even the rebel of the city and then makes things in these wonderful abstract like like the shadows almost become these cloaks which can envelop the characters and right. and, um, and and reveal them at just these particular at just these yeah. particular moments. And I, I want to go off that because um, I want to talk about the, the the frames, the shadows, the darkness, like all those film noir aspects also tell the story. Like it's not just the characters, but it's like Holly is, I, I guess the best part of the film that goes with Holly's journey with the film noir is when he is running from those goons at, at the, the literary thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's got the bird situation. <clears throat> um, and then he's running down the rocks. And then also the part when he's getting chased by that mob who thinks that he With killed the, the porter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, do you guys have thoughts? Well, I was going to mention about black and white, though, which is, of course, the, the greatest characteristic of mm -hmm. film noir. I don't think that film could have been made in color. And right. been as dramatic. Mm -hmm. right. Orson Welles, by the way, loved black and white. Mm -hmm. He said black and white was an actor's friend. Mm. And when I think Peter Bogdanovich talks about that in the intro that's on the DVD, when he questions him on that, he says, tell me one great uh, performance in color. I defy you. <laughs> so, you know, it was he felt that it was. Right. And, of course, all his films, all his most dramatic films were in black and white. Yeah, yeah, the, I was looking for the black and white, um, just the, the camera angles, the shots, the shadows, and those details when I watched the film, because I knew that was a film noir trope. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously that throughout the whole film. Um, but I, I think for this film, it's, it works fantastically as a black and white film, obviously because of the genre and the characters, and kind of all fooling around in the dark. Right. Uh, they don't know mm -hmm. what's going on. And right. every, every turn through this divided city can be... Um, an unknown exploration for for the main character and also for Holly. And the environment, I mean, uh, it's it's great in the environment how like it the the more the more strange that things get, the we the the more things start getting tilted. Mm -hmm. The more yes. and the more the 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 more the almost the contrast, the very fabric of the film seems to be getting sharper. Like right. the like the stones are like the cobblestones are like emerging from the ground. Like they're like these kind of a the kind of teeth of an animal. Right. And um, and there's and you get less and less straight lines so that there's no way that a person can continue on his path without right. going off into some unknown yeah. corner. Throughout the film you feel like whenever he's wandering outside there's people watching him because there's these oh, crazy yeah. point of view shots. Yeah. Right. 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 So right. Right. Like the car park. The extreme yeah. close ups of just individuals in their homes looking out the windows or people on the side or mm -hmm. animals that are part of the film mm -hmm. coming out of nowhere. I feel like that He's 
you kind of you don't know what's going to happen. You feel like he's being watched, and he's kind of like mm. mm-hmm. this this outsider. This, this That's why he like water. assumed really Harry though. was like some bad guy, one of the bad guys trying to get him. And also, when he was in the car, he thought that guy was going to kill him yep. by mm-hmm. his crazy driving. Or taking him somewhere he didn't want to go. Yeah, and I do have a question. When he was in the car and they were showing, like, the faces close up, mm-hmm. were, those were just random people, right? Yes. Like, random men, yeah. just men, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Apparently, it, there were, there were uh, Austrian or Viennese populace Viennese extras, I suppose, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. were in that yes. film, like the Balloon Man, and mm-hmm. there were several faces yeah, during yeah. that taxi oh, yes. ride yeah, that actually, were local people. Yeah, the, the Balloon Man was a local person. He actually yeah. was uh, somebody that Carol Reed had seen wandering the streets selling balloons, and he uh, he tried to uh, teach this uh, gentleman to say balloon, yeah. and mm-hmm. and and that's why the the uh, uh, balloon salesman uh, says. Uh, would you like to buy some balloons? <laughs> that, that was that was Carol Reed's in, uh, instruction. Yeah, I know in, that's interesting. In, even stuff like a balloons and a uh, and a children's ball have a can get a sinister or oh, presented in yeah. a very right. sinister right. Uh, sinister manner. And that that is interesting because, like, we were seeing like we are going through um, the story through Holly's eyes, but at that point we were seeing the story through that child's eyes. Yes, mm-hmm. and he was just seeing the like the argument and mm-hmm. that's all he saw yes and right. he saw that his it's his father mm-hmm. was really like upset so um what we've done in all the discussions is do a one word question so i'll ask you a question and you have to answer it in one word so holly one word of what he means to you or what a feeling or just something that symbolizes him i'm gonna say cowboy that's that's a really nice one um uh, i'm gonna try to go noirish and say holly's problem is he's optima fatalistic he's he's fatalistically optimistic oh that's a good one (laughs) mary innocence okay okay very cool i'll go with the outsider okay fish out of water i'm gonna say drunk a drunk? That's a great one. Yeah, we didn't even touch on that. So, okay, well, that's it for part one, and we'll see you for part two. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.